नमो भगवते वासुदेवा ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवा श्रीमद् भागवतम कैंटो टू कॉस्मिक मैनिफेस्टेशन चैप्टर सेवन शेड्यूल्ड इन कॉर्नेशन स्पेसिफिक फंक्शन टेक्स्ट वन ब्रह्मो वाचा ब्रह्मोवाचा यभिभ्रत क्रौडी तनु सकल यमयी मन अंतर्मर्णव उपागतमादिद्यम तम दंश्रयाद्रिमिव वज्रधरो दधार Lord Brahma said when the ultimately powerful lord assumed the form of a boar as a pastime just to lift the planet earth which was drowned in the great ocean of the universe called Garbhataka Garbhataka the first demon Hiranyakasha appeared and the lord pierced him with his tusk जातो आकूति लोकत्रयस्य महती महरद्यदार्ति स्वायंबुवेन मनुना हरिनुक्त दृजपति फर्स्ट बिगट Suyajna so, is the womb of his wife Akatya, and then Sujana we got the demigods headed by Sujana Suyama. Suyama is the womb of his Mata Lagna. Kali ay to dalne wife Daksina. Wife Daksina. Suyajna. Suyajna as the Indradev. Indradev, the baby. Very great miseries in the three planetary systems, upper, lower, and intermediate. And because he is he is so diminished, the miseries of the universe. He was called Hari by the great father of mankind, namely Swayambhuva Manu. Swayambhuva Manu. Jagne chakarda magrohe dvijade vahotyam. प्रचुपति along with the nine other women sisters he spoke to his mother about self realization by which in that very lifetime she became fully cleansed of the mud of the material modes and thereby achieved liberation the path of kalpya kapila, kapila. atre ra patya ra bi kankshata ahatushto दत्तो मयाहमिति promised to incarnate as a three son the tatreya the tatreya the ta the son of a three and by the grace of the lotus feet of the lord many yadus hey hayas hey hayas etc became so purified that they obtained both material both material and spiritual blessings तम तपो विविध लोक शिश्रुक्षया मे आद सना स्वतपस स चतुसनो भूत प्राकसंप्लव विनिहात्म तत्व सम्यगाद मुनो यदचक्षतात्म
to create different planetary systems, I had to undergo austerities and penance, and the Lord thus being pleased with me incarnated in four sanas, <coughs> sanas, sanka, sub, sanat kumara, sanat kumara, sanandana, sanandana, and sanatana, sanatana, in the previous creation, the spiritual th truth was devastated, but the four sanyas explained it so nicely that the truth at once became clearly perceived by the sages. Dharmasya daksha dohitarya janishta murtyam Narayano nara itisvata pahprabhavaha Drushtvatmano bhagavato niyamavalopam Devyastva nanga prutana gatitum nashekuho To exhibit his personal way of authority and penance, he appeared in twin forms as Naranya Narayan, <laughs> Narayan and Nara in the womb of Murthy. The wife, the wife of Dharma, and the daughter of Daksha, celestial beauties, the companions of Cupid, went to try to break his vows, but they were unacceptable. Unsuccessful. Unsuccessful. For they saw that many beauties like them were imitate, emanating? emanating from him, the personality of Godhead. Kamam dahanti kruti no nanu rosha drushtya rosham dahanta mutate na dahantya sahyam soyam yadantara malam pravishan bibeti kamah katam nu punarasya manashrayeta Great stalwarts like Lord Shiva can by the what wrathful glances overcome just and vanish him, yet they cannot be free from the ob overwhelming effects of their own wrath. Such wrath can never enter into the heart of him, the Lord who is above all of this. So how can just take shelter in Lust. his mind? Lust take shelter in his mind. Vidha sapatnyo dita patri biranti ragnyo Balo pisannu pagatas tapasevanani Tasma ada druvagatim grunate prasanno Divyas tuvanti munayo yadu pariyadastat Weak insulated by insulted. Sharp, insulted by sharp words spoken by the co-wife of the king, even in his presence, Prince Dhruva. Dhruva, though only a boy to subvert severe penances, severe penances in the forest, and the Lord being satisfied by his prayer, awarded him the Dhruva. Through our planet, which is worshipped in great sages, both upward and downward. Yadve namut patagatam dvijavakya vajra niplushta paurusha bagam niraye patantam tratvartito jagati putra padam chalepe dagda vasuni vasuda sakalani enam. Maharaj Vena went astray from the path of righteousness, and the Brahmanas chastised him by the thunderbolt curse. By this king Vena was burnt with his good, good deeds and opulence and was on and was enrolled to hell. The Lord by his causeless mercy descended as his son by the name of Prithu, delivered the condemned king Vena from hell, and exploited the earth by drawing all kinds of crops and produce. Nabira Savrushaba Asa Sudevi Sunur 
यो वै चार सदृग्जडयोगचर्यामहस्यमृषय पदमामनती स्वस्थ प्रशात कर्ण पिमुक्त The Lord appeared as the son of Sudevi, the wife of King Nabi, and was known as Rishabdeva. He performed materialistic yoga to equibalance the mind. This stage is also accepted as the highest perfectional situation of liberation, wherein one in one is situated in one's self and is completely satisfied. Satre mama sa bhagavan har hayashira pato. Sakshat sa yagna purushas ta paniya varna ha. Chando mayo muka mayo kila deva tatma. Vacho bhabu vurushati shvasatosya nasta ha. The Lord appeared as... Hayagriva incarnation in a sacrifice performed by me, Brahma. He is the personified sacrifices and the whole of his body is golden. He is the personified Vedas as well and the super soul of all demigods. When he breathed, all the sweet sounds of the Vedic hymns came out of his nostrils. Matsyo yuganta samaye manulo palabdaha Kshonimayo nikila jiva nikaya ketaha Visram sita nurubhaye salile mukhan me Adaya tatra vijahara haveda margan At the end of the millennium, the, the would-be Vivasvata Manu of the name Satyavrata would say that the Lord in the fish incarnation is the shelter of all kinds of living entities, up to those in the earthly planets. Because of my fear of the vast water at the end of the millennium, the Vedas came out of my Brahman's mouth, and the Lord enjoys those vast waters and protects the Vedas. Shiro dava maradana vapyutapanam the primeval lord then assumed the turtle's incarnation in order to serve as a resting place before for the Mandala Mountain, which was acting as a churning rod. The demigods and demons were churning the ocean of milk with the Mandara Mountain in order to extract ne nectar. The mountain moved back and forth, scratching the back of Lord Tortoise, who, while partially sleeping, was experiencing an itching sensation. <laughs> The personality of God assumed the incarnation of Nusimha Deva in order to vanquish the great fears of the demigods. He killed the king of the demons, Hiranyakashipu, who challenged the Lord with a club in his hand. By placing the demon on his thighs and piercing him with his nails, rolling his eyebrows in anger and showing his fearful teeth and mouth. The leader of the elephants, whose leg was attacked in a river by a crocodile of superior strength, was much aggrieved. Taking a lotus flower in his trunk, he addressed the Lord, saying, O original enjoyer, Lord of the universe, O deliverer, as famous as a place of pilgrimage, all are purified simply by hearing your holy name, which is worthy to be chanted. 
श्रुवा हरिस्तमरणाम प्रमेय चक्रायुध पतगज पतग पतगराजुजादिूढ़ चक्रेण नक्रवदन विनीपाट्य तस्मा दस्ते प्रगृह्य भगवान्पयोजार The personality of Gorod, after hearing the elephant's play, felt that the elephant needed his immediate help, for he was in great distress. Thus, at once the Lord appeared there on the wings of the king of birds, Garuda, fully equipped with his weapon, the wheel chakra. With the wheel, he cut to pieces the mouth of the crocodile to save the elephant, and he delivered the elephant by lifting him by his trunk. जायान्गुणैरवरजोप्यदिपे दिते सुतानाम लोकान विचक्रम इमान यदता दियग्न्यः शाम वामने न जग्रुहे त्रिपदचलेना याग्नाम प्रुते पतिचरन प्रभु बिर्न चाल्यः The Lord of the Transcendental to all material modes still surpassed all the qualities of the sons of Aditi, known as the Adityas. The Lord appeared as the youngest son of Aditi, and because he surpassed all the planets of the universe, he is the supreme personality of Godhead. On the pretense of asking for a measurement of three footsteps of land, he took away all the lands of Bali Maharaj. He asked simply because, without begging. No authority can take one's rightful possession. Narto bale raya mukra mapada shaucham apashika drutavato vibuda di patyam yovai pratishrutam rute na chikir shadanyad atma na manga manasa haraye bimene. Bali Maharaj, who put on his head the water washed from the lotus feet of the Lord, did not think of anything besides his promise. In spite of being forbidden by his spiritual master, the king dedicated his own personal body to fulfil the measurement of the Lord's third step. For such a personality, even the kingdom of heaven, which he conquered by his strength, was of no value. Hare Krishna. Tobiam. Mother, you were reading one to eighteen. Okay, today I saw eighteen and nineteen. They are teaching. I thought maybe. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you so Hare much. Krishna. Sorry, Thank I had to take over you. Devika. I had to take over Devika because she's got no really. No problem. I could see that she was a bit much. She did really well. Otherwise, she tried well. Thank yeah. you, so much. Devika. Thank you so much, Yuthi Mataji. Thank you, Tamika. Very nice recitation. Translation reading. I'm going to share my screen. Uh... Oops, sorry, I'm going to be. Okay, so we are discussing the uh, verse eighteen and nineteen today, Canto two, chapter seven. Um, so it's five past eight. We will also have a bhajan this evening at eight forty. This is our usual Sunday program, and uh, we will discuss two verses. We will read the purport. Eighteen is a. Is a Long. When when I passed it there, he said to me, "There, this really good color car. I like the car." He said, "Okay, that's good. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya." नारायणम नमस्कृत नरम चैव नरोत्तम देवीं सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नष्ट प्रायशो भद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्ति भगवती नैष्टी ओम ज्ञान ज्ञानांजन शलाकेश तस्म श्रीगुरव नम
वॉटर वॉश्ड फ्रॉम द फीट ऑफ द पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड फिट आप वॉटर शिखा ऋतवत ऑफ वन हु ऑन इज हेड विबूध आधिपत्यम सुप्रीमसी ओवर द किंगडम ऑफ डेमी गॉड्स यह वन हु वाई सर्टनली प्रतिश्रुतम वॉट वॉज ड्यूली प्रॉमिस्ड रितेन बिसाइड्स दैट चिकित्सक वाइड फॉर अन्य एनीथिंग एल्स आमानम इवन हिज पर्सनल बॉडी अंग ओ नारद मनसा विद इन हिज माइंड हर ये अन टू द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड अभी मैंने एजुकेटेड translation and purport by divine grace ac bhakti vidam to promise la kar raha hai to bol pa ji ye translation bali maharaj who put on his head the water washed from the lotus feet of the lord did not think of anything besides his promise in spite of being forbidden by his spiritual master the king dedicated his own personal body fulfill the measurement of the lord's third step for such a personality even the kingdom of heaven which he conquered by his strength was of no value for for bali maharaj by gaining the transcendental favor of the lord in exchange for his great material sacrifice was able to have a place in vaikuntha lok with equal or greater facilities of eternal enjoyment therefore he was not at all the loser by sacrificing the kingdom of heaven which he had possessed by his material strength so devotee i was thinking conscious of time that we have so very short time so we can pass we will and professor popa has given us an ideas of wonderful purports so we'll just discuss the purport as we go and uh, So we'll discuss this for ten years, and then we'll have another one for ten, fifteen years. So um, a few points that comes here. Uh, if you read the the translation, what it said here is the other thing, the last one, how it comes, which he conquered by his strength, was of no value. Now, it is important to understand and appreciate. is surrender fully if we know what it meant for bali maharaj to surrender what he surrendered and how, how did he gain that in the first place so when we will go through the you know the, the later part of shrimad bhagavatam 8 canto when this past time will come we will know more details but just to set the context this earlier before that there was a um, Uh, churning of ocean, a lot of effort was put by the demons and the, the demigods, and then somehow uh, the nectar did come out. The long story by itself, and the nectar somehow by the uh, supreme mercy of the Lord got distributed to the demigods um, in His uh, special incarnation as Mohini Murti, and then. 
the demons lost everything and there was a fight again and indra killed you know massively all lots of demons and they were defeated very badly and then again somehow the demons got back by the mercy of the spiritual master they revived and spiritual master shukracharya and they fought back and this time bali maharaj with all his strength he fought again and he won the kingdom it's like me speaking in four lines without much details of it but we appreciate all, probably all of us know the story of this bali maharaj's uh, past time but if we remember that at this time and just try to appreciate what it took for him to get what he got with his own strength that's why there is a specific um, sentence by Prabhupada that which he earned or conquered by his strength it's not an inheritance you know someone may inherit so the the, the person was born in the royalty and then he was a prince of his father or mother then he became a certain shape becomes a king so th there was no effort that was put by an individual to earn that so if someone gives away something that he has already received by the destiny and uh, obviously everything requires good karma in the previous birth and all those things apply but here we are seeing that someone who has conquered and not with the ordinary not an ordinary war that took place at the time it was a huge battle a huge loss a lot of things were set a lot of things were put at stake a lot of sacrifice and Shukracharya, by his strength, he had revived. So, by only by his power and mercy, that the battle was won back. Now, what Bali Maharaj has done, yeah, he has given away in charity that was received as a blessing from a spiritual master. He is actually rejected his spiritual master's advice. Which is not ordinary. Again, if we understand what it means uh, to to reject spiritual master, although it was as per the scriptures, you know, so as per this, the Shastra rule, what he did was the right thing. But there is a strong relationship, devotees. So there is a strong relationship between the spiritual master and the disciple. And it is more in the material strength, the whole thing happening, because by his material strength, by his power of, you know, uh, chanting the specific uh, process, he he knew how to do it, revive dead people back from their, you know, body to make them live again, and then give them the strength, and then give them all the blessings, and then they fight. So we just appreciate that, and then put ourselves in that situation. If something that we would have won by our strength, would we be able to give away? That's the quality of devotee. Give, devotee for devotee, what's most important is what is pleasing to the Lord. It's not about how I got it, how I won it, what it had to do. It is mine. First of all, that duality. We'll come to the verse later on. There is no duality there in Bali Maharaj. And he says, Prabhupada uh, then says it starts with right from the beginning because someone may not have a lot of patience to, to read all the way to the end or all the, read all the way to the eighth canto. But Prabhupada makes this wonderful point right here in the beginning. Someone does not make it that far that, okay, someone may say that doesn't sound fair that Madhi Maharaj, you know, he won with his strength and so much hard work, all is gone. No. What he received in return was even higher. <clears throat> so, therefore, he was not at all the loser by sacrificing the kingdom of heaven, which he had possessed by his material strength. In other words, well, when the Lord snatches away one's hard-earned material possessions and favors one one, sorry, I'll read again. In other words, when the Lord snatches away one's hard-earned material possessions 
and favors one with his personal transcendental service for eternal life, bliss, and knowledge. Such taking away by the Lord should be considered a special favor upon such a pure devotee. The Lord's special favor guarantees what? Eternal life full of bliss and knowledge. And in the material life, it could be uh, blissfully ignorant. And there's also bliss there in ignorance, but that is all temporary. Eventually, uh, everyone loses whatever they gain in the material life anyway. What a devotee, a pure devotee earns by surrendering his positions is the Lord's favor. I mean, how does the Lord favor them? By giving them eternal life full of bliss and knowledge. So material possessions, however, alluring. They may be, cannot be permanent possessions. Therefore, one has to voluntarily give up such possessions or one has to leave such possessions at the time of quitting this material body. The same man knows that all material possessions are temporary and that the best use of such positions is to engage them in the service of the Lord so that the Lord may be pleased with him and award him a permanent place in his Param Dharma. Now, positions, when people earn, what do they want to do? Those who are um, towards the later stage of their life, the body is not fit anymore. What happens? Someone loses, no, someone gives, uh, someone has to lose the body. What do they do with the position? Well, I will give it to my son, my daughter, my family here, there, which is right, which we are not saying that, which is not right. But then to give to the Lord means what? He will receive in return eternal blessings. And much more in many ways. So the same man knows that all material positions are temporary and the best use of such positions is to engage them in the service of the Lord. It becomes an eternal service. Service to the relations is good, but that's temporary. That's pretty much creates more karma or binds individuals with receiving and giving. I receive from someone I have to give back to that person or I received in my previous lives, I have to give back in this life or I give to someone I receive in the future life. But that exchange goes on in that material sense. But there is no um, permanent position because we are, always, we are always gaining and losing, gaining and losing because that's only to do with that body which by itself is temporary. So, Bhagavad Gita Prabhupada quotes this amazing verse and then we will try to understand in context of uh, this pastime of Bali Maharaj. The Paramadham of the Lord is described as follows. Before Prabhupada makes the Paramadham, he also quotes the 15.5. Nirmana moha jita sangha dosha adhyatma nitya vinivrittatama Nirmana-moha-nirmana-nirmana-nirmana-nirmana-nirmana-nirmana-nirmana-nirmana-nirmana-nirmana-nirmana-nirmana-nirmana-nirmana-nirmana-nirmana-nirmana-nirmana-n
fame or we want to have we want to be respected ourselves the man is also like i must be respected then what happens is we become self centered then everything that we want to do is only for the purpose of gaining some respect from the people now bali maharaj he had all the respect he had won the the heavenly kingdom all the planetary system were under his control and what happened in the end like he was he had nothing to give and he promised three steps after two steps there was nothing more to do apart from offering his own head to the supreme lord which he did not hesitate now this is the quality of a devotee he does not hesitate in giving everything to the lord all the possessions and his own self as well this is nirmana not worrying about what people would think like everyone was actually a lot of his relatives were not happy with what he was doing his his guru is not happy with what he is doing yeah he is going to lose all his respect he was bound by the pasha he was bound by the you know the vasuki that's thing and he had nothing more to say and he was just like a ordinary person suddenly someone becomes from the emperor of the whole universe to someone who is tied up like a how do you say like nothing so that is so he did not consider all those things when he was you know fulfilling his promise amoha is it the way to say it amoha means someone who is not in illusion what is the illusion illusion is that think something belongs to me or i am the proprietor i am the controller so so bali maharaj had this this special um, quality that he was not under any illusion even though he was being um, you know guided in a positive direction by his guru but he had no illusion that what i'm offering to the lord is is the right thing to do and that truly belongs to lord only it's not my it's not the you know the, the general population this includes all of us a lot of us we are more into what is you know mind i me and mind jita sang dosha ha sang dosha means which is association a wrong association so even if there was a wrong association of his own guru he gave up that association yes he guru was so angry with him but he did not hesitate in giving up that association now we can apply that in our own lives and see if there is any association that we have which can make us uh, or take us away from the service of the lord so this is a huge thing and uh, it requires a lot of experience and guidance also and you say you know we have to give up the association um it does not mean that we we go away we stop talking to people outside our relatives um is about taking associations we don't take association of people who are not devoted to the lord or at least trying to be devoted to the lord likewise who is adhyatma nitya vinivritta kama who is given up given away all the desires and who is who is always in the consciousness of the self or the supreme lord to andvay vimukta who is given up the duality sukha dukha duality of what sukha dukha samge what is called as sukha and dukha which is only related to the body which is temporary itself that individual gachanti amudha he goes that intelligent person mooda is a fool gachanti going that intelligent person will go padam amayam tat he go to the place of the lord and when he goes there what is the promise this is no problem with the light so here we are worried about you know what happens there is no sun we always compare you know complaining about the weather situation um and uh, whether we will have sunshine today or not you know we can all in england relate it to a lot na tad bhasayate suryo na sashanko na pavatah there is no need of the sun there not moon no electricity power kafi 
ಯದ್ಗಥವಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಯು ಗೋ ಒನ್ ಯು ಗೋ ಯದ್ಗಥವಾ ನ ನಿವರ್ತಂತೆ ತದ್ ಧಾಮ ಪರಮ ಮಮ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಮಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಭಾವ ಇಫ್ ವಿ ಫಾಲೋ ದೀಸ್ ಮೆನಿ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ದ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಮಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೊ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಅ ಬಿಸ್ನೆಸ್ which is in the which is going to give us a loss sometimes we may get into loss making business we bought something for 5 pounds we sold it for 4 pounds or we bought something for 5 pounds we lost it all completely mm. yeah those are the, the the material business so even if we did consider this as a business which is not really but uh, the exchange of the lord is is so sweet and the guarantee is yet katwa na nivartante once you been once you go there you don't come back so one who possesses more in this material world yeah this is the other point of bhagwan to make more there's also like how much to possess how much to be given away there's all these uh, little guidance there one who possesses more in this material world in the shape of houses land children society friendship and wealth possesses these things only for the time being there's so much effort we may be putting in making a house or many houses one house there one house there make it nice this that but she has land here land there you know and you give it to my children this children that society is fame i have so many friends because i have so much money yeah so all the friendship well all these things are only temporary one cannot possess all this illusory paraphernalia created by maya permanently so such a possessor is more illusioned in the matter of his self realization therefore one should possess less or nothing so that one may be free from artificial prestige owning all these things means we will have prestige and prestige losing prestige is a very big problem in bhagavad gita also krishna says that if you lose you know if you walk away from the war you can lose your prestige and losing prestige for shape is worse than death this is the other side of argument so krishna is more you know uh, encouraging him to fight but the point is like losing prestige is is you know is worse than death and if we have prestige because of these positions and then losing it you know is a lot of scare also like we have fear the one of the fear is this now oh, will i lose this position or that position will people stop respecting me if i did that if i did that what will people say why oh, don't do this this i don't go to the pubs or i don't go to this place that place what will people think of me will i you know will i become um less popular or those things may come in mind but we just remember using you know reading shall purpose purport that there are artificial we are contaminated in the material world by association with the three modes of nature material nature therefore the more one spiritually advances by devotional service to the lord in exchange for his temporary possessions the more one is freed from the attachment of material illusion to achieve this stage of life one must be firmly convinced about spiritual existence and its permanent effects to know exactly the permanency of spiritual existence one must voluntarily practice possessing less or only the minimum to maintain one's material existence without difficulty beautiful instruction mashallah to you know all of us struggle i struggle myself to to accept or understand or adopt this even if i in in theory understand this but to be able to accept this and we see that devotees do that you know, they we don't want to possess more they don't want to get getting involved you see some of the the devotees are so intelligent sometimes i think when i hear some devotees speaking and and their intelligence level I think wow this type of you know intelligence is not even heard of seen anywhere you know, we have so many Prabhupada, wonderful Prabhupada disciples when they're speaking, their realizations, even their intelligence, even in the material aspects is so amazing. But devotees aren't going out to become, you know, um, big executive. 
Again, nothing wrong in that. Someone can handle that. That's also fine. But in general guidance is to have less is easier for spiritual uh, endeavors. One should not create artificial needs. That will help one be satisfied with the minimum. Artificial needs of life are activities of the senses. The modern advancement of civilization is based on these activities of the senses. All in other words, it is a civilization of sense gratification. So how many things that we purchase today, of those things that we purchase, if we start to really think, how many things do I really need, it is shocking. I find that sometimes I say, really shocked. Like, do I really need this? Not. Do I really need this a new device every year? Because it's in the market. <laughs> it's, it's shocking that we don't need it. Um, Things were going okay when we did not have, you know, the smartphones. But at the same time, we are making use of this technology. You know, we are on the Zoom and we are discussing Shreemad Bhagavatam. This is also good. So, um, Prabhupada said that you know it's about how to use uh, technology. For example, we, I think it was like a knife in the hand of a murderer or surgeon had completely different outcome of, you know, in that situation. Surgeon would you know, save life and the murderer would take life. Similarly, with whatever tools we have, we try to use in the service of Krishna. Above the senses, he is not sorry, I missed one thing. Perfect civilization is a civilization of Atma or the soul proper. The civilized man of sense gratification is on an equal level with animals because animals cannot go beyond the activities of the senses. Above the senses is the mind. The civilization of mental speculation is also. Not the perfect stage of life because above the mind is the intelligence. And the Bhagavad Gita gives us information of the intellectual civilization. Buddhi Yoga. Bhagavad Gita, Buddhi Yoga is teaching that. The Vedic literatures give different directions for human civilization, including the civilization of the senses, of the mind, of the intelligence, and of the soul proper. The Bhagavad Gita primarily deals with the intelligence of man leading one to the progressive path of civilization of the spirit soul. And Srimad Bhagavatam is a complete human civilization dealing with the subject matter of the soul proper. As soon as a man is raised to the state of civilization of the soul, he is fit to be promoted to the kingdom of God, which is described in the Bhagavad Gita as per the above verses, which we just read, two verses from Bhagavad Gita, fifteen chapter. The primary information of the kingdom of God informs us that there is no need of sun, moon, electricity, which are all necessary in this material world, world of darkness. And the secondary information of the kingdom of God explains that anyone able to reach that kingdom by adoption of the civilization of the soul proper, or in other words, by method of bhakti yoga, attains the highest perfection of life. No compromise, nothing less, the highest, the best. One is then situated in the permanent existence of the soul with full knowledge of transcendental love service for the Lord. Bali Maharaj accepted the civilization of the soul in exchange for his great material positions and thus became fit for promotion to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven which he achieved by dint of his material power was considered most insignificant in comparison with the kingdom of God. This is the comparison, like someone may be proud of maybe getting uh, some money or more money. In this one, you know, earth planet, someone may own something, maybe half a percent of the earth. But here we're talking about the king who had won the whole planet with system, the heavens as well. So those who have attained the comfort of material civilization, Made for sense gratification should try to attain the kingdom of God by following in the footsteps of Bali Maharaj to exchange his acquired material strength, adopting the process of Bhakti Yoga as recommended in the Bhagavad Gita and for the experience of Bhagavatam. We discuss this point. The next verse, conscious of time. Translation we already read this. Oh, Narada, you were taught about the science of God. This is now changing. So the last two verses uh, were for Bali Maharaj, uh, Vamandev's uh, incarnation. And now the next incarnation is being uh, discussed here. 
and this is the answer with that. Oh Narad, you were taught about the science of God and his content and loving service by the personality of Godhead in his incarnation of Hamsa Avatar. He was very much pleased with you due to your intense proportion of devotion. You are the full science of devotion, which is especially understandable by person. Soul surrendered unto Lord Vasudev, the personality of Godhead. This is the, the translation of his 19th verse. Perfect. So, this is uh, main points here is what is the special quality? You explain this little understandable. Understandable. Who can understand the, the full science of devotional service? The souls surrendered unto Lord. Similar to Bali Maharaj, this talks about the surrender to the Lord. Only those who are fully surrendered to the Lord Vasudev, they get the understanding of the devotional service and the devotional life. And again, he says, second, he was very much pleased with you due to your intense proportion of devotional service. For devotee and devotional service are two correlative terms. For unless one is inclined to be a devotee of the Lord, he cannot enter into the intricacies of devotional service. Some people may, might think that bhakti is very simple, like ah, bhajan like you know, oh, sorry, the, um, you know, you just uh, take some um, symbols and you're just playing and singing something. It's quite sentimental. Some people believe that bhakti is sentimental. For them. To understand even is, is, is going to be a problem because they don't have any devotion. So they cannot even understand what devotional life is. But a practicing devotee, sadhaka, all of us, we understand what it means. So it is not a simple, it's intricate. It's intricate. It's simple for simple, Prabhupada said, and intricate for intricate. And more the 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 point is that it is. I, as we hear, shoreless and bottomless ocean devotional service or the science of bhakti is having no shore to it, there's no bottom to it. The so Lord Sri Krishna wanted to explain the Bhagavad Gita, which is the science of devotional service, unto Sri Arjuna because Arjuna was not only his friend but a devotee, a great devotee as well. Bhakti, Sri Nisaka, the whole process is that all living entities being constitutionally part and parcel of the Supreme Living Being, the Absolute Personality of Godhead, have proportionately minute independence of action also. Oh, this point may take a long time, but still, but yeah, just remember that we all have the independence. Someone may not say that, well, what can I say? What can I do? I'm being driven in here and there by my mind or by my karma. What can I do? No, we have still got the minute independence that we can use to either use our mind, intelligence, words, body in the service of the Lord or in our own sense gratification. So the preliminary qualification for entering into devotional service of the Lord is that one become a willing cooperator. And as such, one should voluntarily cooperate with the with persons who are already engaged in the continental devotional service of the Lord. That's the easiest. We don't, we don't mean the cooperate means, oh yeah, I do cooperate, but I don't like these devotees, you know, these people, they are very weird, they ask me to do lots of things. And so we have to cooperate. We use, see how Prabhupada used this word, so I mean, it just always sort of find, uh, we request you to to very deeply understand the purpose of the Prabhupada. Every word that he uses, there's a lot of depth in that. So cooperation, become a willing cooperator which is very unheard of in today's day and time. Nobody wants to cooperate with no one. But if we willingly cooperate, voluntarily cooperate with the other devotees already engaged, then our success is guaranteed. By cooperating with such persons, the prospective candidate will gradually learn the techniques of devotional service. It's technique. It's not, a, not an emotion, not a sentiment. It's a technique. And with the progress of such learning, one becomes proportionately free from the contamination of material association. Proportionately. To the degree we 
cooperate to a degree we learn the technique and then we progress and we as we progress more in the working service our contamination of material association becomes less and less it's like that such a purificatory process will establish the prospective candidate in firm faith and gradually elevate him to the stage of transcendental state transcendental taste for such devotional service this is a purificatory process is what sadhana bhakti so by everyday chanting at the right time in the right mood and following the the, the process the what is the process? The purificatory process. So the sadhana bhakti is purificatory process that we are following under the direction of our spiritual master or senior devotees. So thus he acquires a genuine attachment for the devotional service of the Lord, and his conviction carries him on to the point of ecstasy just prior to the stage of transcendental love. Prabhupada giving all this deep science, the technique. Of getting the Krishna frame before that, all the bhava bhakti, all these things are being explained here. Such knowledge of devotional service may be divided into two sections. Last uh, few minutes, namely, preliminary knowledge of the nature of devotional service and the secondary knowledge of its execution. Bhagavatam is in relation with the personality of Godhead, his beauty, fame, opulence, dignity, attraction, and transcendental qualities which attract one towards him for exchanges of love and affection. So we always get attracted to someone who has some opulence. A Lord's opulence, his beauty, all the six opulences, and explains like differently. The opulent dignity, attraction, transcendental qualities. They are so attractive that with the right mood, with the right association, with the cooperation, learning a technique. We can start to uh, get attracted to the Lord. There is a natural affinity of the living entity for the loving service of the Lord. There's a natural affinity. You know? It's not something that is to be attained, to be achieved. It's already there, dormant within every living entity. The natural thing. This affinity becomes artificially covered by the influence of material association. And Srimad Bhagavatam helps one very genuinely remove that artificial covering. Now, this is again hope giving. Now, we do not think that my covering is permanent. It's not permanent, it's Maya. It's just artificial. It's just covered by, by, by nature. Soul is already, already uh, in love with the Lord. It's just that the moment is covered by the illusory energy of the Lord. Because of our own desire. Therefore, it is particularly mentioned here that Srimad Bhagavatam acts like the lamp of transcendental knowledge. These two sections of transcendental knowledge in devotional service become revealed to a person who is a soul surrendered unto Vasudeva. As it is said in Bhagavad Gita 719, such a great soul, fully surrendered to The Lord's Spirit of Vasudeva is very, very, very. Sir Mahatma Sri Buddha Bhattar is quarter to eight. It's time to stop sharing and have some wonderful bhajan. Thank you so much, devotees. Jyoti Mataji, do the bhajan now. Yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you for the wonderful class, Prabhuji. Yes. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Madhuran Pranam. Oh, glory to Srila Prabhupada. So, Prabhuji, for today's bhajan, we have our dear Jai Mataji who will be singing the bhajan. But before she sings the bhajan, it, um, if Orpita, our dear Orpita, can do the English translation, please. Thank you, Prabhuji. Orpita, yeah. when you're ready, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Translation. One, Nityananda is my wealth. Lord Gora Chandra is my master. The youthful divine couple is my life. Advaita Acharya is my strength. Gadadhar is my family. Nara Hari Sarakara is my glory. The dust of the devotees' lotus feet is my bathing water. The chanting of the devotees' names is my satisfaction. Considering the merits of all Vedic literatures in the lights of Vedic of devotional service, I have conducted that the Srimad Bhagavatam is the best of all scriptures. 
My mind is firmly convinced of the spiritual benefit obtained by eating the remnants of food stuff left by the devotees. The names of the devotees are my happiness. The land of Rindavan is the enclosure within which I keep my mind. Poor hearted Narottama Dasa speaks in this way. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Arpita. A wonderful recitation. Um, Mataji, when you're ready, Jai Mataji, thank you. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. Uh, if I make any mistakes, please forgive me. Um, I'll do my best. Dhanamora Nityananda Patimora Gaura Chandra Dhanamora Nityananda Patimora Gaura Chandra Pranamora Yugala Kishora Dana Mora Nityananda Pati Mora Gaura Chandra Prana Mora Yoga Lucky Shora Dana Mora Nityananda Advaita Acharya Bala Gadadhara Mora Kula Advaita Acharya Bala Gadadhara Mora Kula Nara Hari Vila Sayamora Dana Mora Nityananda Pati Mora Gaura Chandra Prana Mora Yuga Lucky Shora Dana Mora Mid Nityananda Vaishnavera Padduli Tahe Mora Snana Kaili Vaishnavera Padduli Tahe Mora Snana Kaili Tarpana Mora Vaishnavera Nama Vichara Kariyamane Bhakti rasa swadane Vichara Kariyamane Bhakti rasa swadane Madhyastha Shri Bhagavat Purana Dhana Mora Nityananda Vaishnavera Uchishtha Tahe Mora Mananishtha Vaishnavera Uchishtha Tahe Mora Mananishtha Vaishnavera Namate Ulasa Vrindavane Chabutara Tahe Mora Managera Vrindavane Chabutara Tahe Mora Managera Kohe Dina Narottam Dasa Dana Mora Nityananda Pati Mora Gaura Chandra Prana Mora Yoga Lucky Shora Dana Mora Nityananda Hare Krishna. Hare Bol Mataji. Hare Krishna Mataji. That was so amazing. So amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. One million times. Thank you so much for choosing this 
beautiful bhajan and singing it so nicely with so much love and affection thank you so i love to thank uh, shri ji kishori uh, devidasi for this for suggesting this bhajan thank you yeah yeah thank you that's it this particular we're going to just share to the satan share tamat words in says what भक्त पद धूलि और भक्त पद जल भक्त भुक्त अवशेष तीन महाबल महाबल Thank you so much, Hari Krishna. Bhajan was my favorite. Thank you, Hari Krishna. The vote is is uh, nine minutes to nine. Any point of conversation? Uh, question, comments, corrections. Perfect. Thank you so much for giving us this perfect evening, Mr. Bhajan. Thank you so much. Grant Rashi, Mr. Bhagavatam ki jai, Shilato Pat ki jai, Vancha Kalapat Rubya Shri, Kripa Asindu. Kindu Rubya Vacha Pati Tanam Pa Vinay Bhyo Vaishnavay Bhyo Namo Namaha. Thank you, Prabhu Ji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu Ji, for a nice class. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu Ji. Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Ram Ram